Okay, welcome to another week of Famitsu Check It Out. My name is Paul Smith, and I'm going to be talking about the latest issue of Famitsu for this week of April 17th, 2020. Um, here's the issue in front of me right here. If you can see it on the left side of your screen. Um, yeah, this uh, the cover story on this week's issue of Famitsu is... Um, Square Enix's new games coming out. Um, uh, I don't know if you can tell by the uh, art style, but uh, this uh, art is from uh, Bravely Default. Uh, well, Bravely De Default 2, to be exact. Uh, and then you've got the names of the three uh, games that they're going to be featuring in this 36-page 30, feature here. Um, Bravely F Default 2, Various Day Life, and then Octopath Traveler, um Hairiku no Nanisha. Um something about like the earth I can't read that that kanji. Uh the earth something person. So um yeah, so we're gonna check out Famitsu. Uh I've got uh my own uh Japanese snack here, I guess if you will. Uh, I got an energy drink, sugar-free. Uh, I buy these from my store, and they're about uh, 50 yen a piece, uh, which is like less than 50 cents for one of these. Um, they're not bad. So let's get a little energy in me. Um, okay. So yeah. Um, last week, uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake came out, and... Um, that will dominate some of this week's magazine. A couple weeks ago was the few weeks ago, I guess, was the debut of um, uh, Animal Crossing: uh, New Horizons. Um, so yeah, let's. Uh, that's that's mainly what I've been playing is New Horizons. I haven't gotten remake yet. Um, I'd really like to get it, but um, I just don't have the money for it right now um let's see here we are we're gonna start out with the week's top 30 games um this is usually where i start off my episode it's usually at the beginning of the magazine so um uh, we do have a new addition to the weekly top five this week uh number one is uh uh animal crossing new horizons number two is the new edition playstation 4 version of biohazard or resident evil 3 um yeah, I was surprised that wasn't on it last week, but they must not have started selling it until after the the cutoff period for the um for the issues uh weekly top uh top 30. Um the next game on the list is the PlayStation 4 version of uh One Piece uh the Dynasty Warriors style One Piece game. Uh and then number 4 is uh th that game on the Switch. And then number five is Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Um, yeah, it's been holding on pretty well in Japan, uh, Mario Kart 8. So, um, yeah, I, a few weeks ago I thought it was because of a sale, but, you know, it's it's been staying, staying tough up there. Um, next game on the list is Smash Brothers. Uh, next game is uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield. I'm surprised Pokemon Sword and Shield has taken such a dive. Um, you can see here that... Last week and the week before it was number four, but now it's number seven. Um, another, actually, climb the charts this week was Minecraft. Um, yeah, ever since I've been doing this show, Minecraft has been like in the top five. So um, last week it was number ten, but it crawled back back up to number eight this week. So yeah, that's I, I've always found it really interesting how popular Minecraft on the Switch is over here. Um, the next one at number nine is uh, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, and then number ten is Ring Fit Adventure. Um, I don't usually go into um, the eleven to thirty. Um, I'll bring up new games on the list, and then anything that I just find a little interesting. Um, the new game on the list right here is number twelve. Uh, Um, so it's a word puzzle game for, uh, the switch. 
I think it was featured in a magazine like last week or two weeks ago. Um, it's um, a very Japanese style, um, almost like a a crossword puzzle or something like that. So yeah, that's that's a new game that's just been added to the top top thirty list. And then this was this appeared on the the list last week at number five, and here it's up to nineteen is animal crossing for the 3ds this is the first time or last week and this week is the first time that i've seen a 3ds game on here since i've started this show so yeah that's pretty interesting um i, I i'm guessing that maybe like a lot of parents are just like buying uh the the 3ds one because their kids already have a 3ds and maybe they don't have a switch and they're just like, well, if you're interested in it, why don't you buy the why don't you play the old one? I don't know. But um all right. Let's move on to the next thing on our list of things to check out, which is the top 30 most anticipated games. Um so number one is Tales of Arise. Um most of the other games have already come out. Uh Zelda went from Zelda started down here at the bottom and has clear has uh, each week moved up uh, one spot to the top. Um, it's the new Zelda Breath of the Wild game that they're making. Uh, I don't think there's like a title for it yet, but um, and then uh, number three is uh, Trials of Mana, and number four is Bayonetta three. And then uh, number five is the new Shin Megami Tensei game. Uh, I don't know why they have this here now printing. It seems like it's probably like a printing error on um, Famitsu's side. So yeah, I'm not really sure. Um, Cyberpunk 2077 has moved to six. Ghost of Tsushima is at seven. Last of Us Part 2 is 8. Uh, Ushido. Ushido is a game that we've talked about many times on this pot podcast. It's a Japanese anime horror game. Um, it's done by Level 5, the people behind um, um, Yokai Watch series, as well as... Um, oh, what is that game? Um... Uh, Oh, Nino Kuni. Yeah, they also did Nino Kuni. Um, and then uh, number ten is Xenoblade Definitive Edition for the Switch. Um, they announced that uh, on one of their directs that they would be making. Um, that first Xenoblade over again for the Switch. Um, so yeah, those are those are your uh, most anticipated titles. Um, as you can see, <laughs> we have a Vita title on here. <laughs> Anonymous Code. Uh, I think this shows up on the rookie list as well. Um, it looks like that game is also coming out for the PlayStation 4, and that's a new addition to this list at 28. And then um, number 29. I looked this up how to say this before. It's 10. 10 show? 10 Q? I, I don't know. Uh, no Saku. Saku na Hime. Um, but yeah, that's that's also a new addition to the top 30 list. Um, the other uh, top 30 uh, most anticipated games, these are called the Rookies. Um, the Rookies are games that um, um, are, um, they're not sequels. Uh, they're original, original games. So number one, we have Ushido. Number two is Ghosts of Tsushima. Number three, Cyberpunk 2077. Number four is Root Film, and then uh, number five is Genshin, I believe is how you say that. Uh, number ten is one that I'm interested in. This is a game by Nipponichi. Um, it's called Shoujo Jikoku no Doku Musume. 
Um, I like the way that this game looks. Um, very anime. Um, looks like it's an action game, uh, action RPG game. So um, yeah, it uh, it looks very interesting. So um, here is that um, ten something no saku na hime. Uh, this is the Nintendo Switch version that they're talking about here. Um, I believe this is the one. Oh no, this is done by Marvelous. Okay. Um uh this uh Genshin, this is the one that's done by like a Chinese company. Uh this one down here at 14 is a game is that Skull and Bone game that's coming out. Um Ubisoft. Interestingly enough, uh Ubisoft's name in Japan is UBISoft, UBISoft instead of Ubisoft or Ubisoft. Um, yeah, this is an interesting game that I saw this week. Um, we're, we're moving on to the features in the magazine, but this game called Atomic Crops. Um, DMM Games, uh, that's a Japanese game publisher. Uh, they do like smaller indie titles, um, a lot of um what do you call it um license titles and stuff like that but yeah this game looks i like the art style here looks like it might be um like a um um oh okay so this is something that's come out over we it's already out overseas and stuff this uh, DMM Games is just bringing it to Japan. Um, so it says that up here at the top of this page that um, they're just releasing the Japanese language version over here. So <coughs> it looks like the publisher is called Birdbath Games. I've never really heard them. But this game looks like a Harvest Moon clone or um, what is the what is the other one? the uh the indie game hecka popular i don't know whatever harvest moon club so um this game also looks really cool uh um it's called ninjala ninjala um uh it looks like it's coming from gung ho to the switch only to the switch um yeah i haven't gotten a chance to actually read about the game but it looks like a splatoon ripoff um there's definitely going to be online fighting uh yeah it says eight players But, I mean, if you look at the art style here, there's really cartoony, bright art style. Uh, definitely something that's going to sell well on the Switch to uh, younger kids. But, I don't know, like, I really think this has the power to maybe do something. It definitely has a Splatoon vibe to it. Um, on this page, they're looking at some of the characters. And... Uh, um yeah this kid's got a katana uh she's got a hammer this one's got a yo-yo and yeah you're battling in some way okay so yeah there's there, these are the only three types of weapons it says here um but then there's going to be 12 varieties inside those i guess so like a maybe a yo-yo with 12 different abilities um here's the weapon selection screen it looks like um yeah super bright super colorful uh something that hopefully will appeal to all audiences 
uh, very interested in what this is. I'm going to read some more about this and maybe post an article on my website. Uh, um, I'm not really sure what this is. A uh, ghost parade. Uh, looks like a platforming game, potentially. Action, yeah. Uh, and here's a feature on uh, uh, Final Fantasy Remake. Um, there was a huge feature last year that took up, mo or last year, last week, that took up most of the magazine. Um, and uh, they've put actually a, another large um, uh, feature in this magazine as well. Um, they're just talking more about the game, little hints about <clears throat> the gameplay and stuff like that. Uh, they're going more into the characters. Um, page 25 is going to have, oh yeah. So, uh, clouds, um, yeah. So they're going into like the abilities for like the Buster Sword. Uh, Rabid Chain. Fuel <coughs> mm. Bust. Uh, Avalanche Oni. Uh, and then here's Tifa's as well. Um, so yeah, they're going into uh, more detail on their weapons and powers, it looks like here. Um, yeah, there's a lot of screens from actual like um, fights within the game, you can see. Yeah, they're, they're talking about like what happens when you press like uh, certain buttons like that, the uh, square button. Like pushing the square button for a long time gives you certain things. Um, Ares here. Yeah. So, yeah, just more information for people that are really excited about Final Fantasy and uh, haven't purchased it yet. Or for those who have purchased it, they're going a little bit more in depth here into um, what everything is doing. Uh, Uh, even here, they've got some materia that you can possibly get. Um, so there's a little checklist of material. And then uh, it's giving you like the, the power level. Um, HP up, MP up have very high power levels. Magical, lucky, yeah. Uh, what do we got over here? Uh, so this is going more in depth into each chapter. So this is chapter one. Um, they're giving you like a little bit of of information about it. Um, here's the boss character. They're telling you um, information about that character. Um, Yeah, they're giving you more information about how to get through the chapter and stuff like that. Over here, this is chapter two. Uh, you're moving on to uh, a downtown area. Uh, there's another boss here. Uh, they're keeping the HP of the boss secret. Let's see if they reveal it. Yeah, they didn't reveal it over here too. Um, but it looks like he's uh, weak to lightning. And then over here, this boss is weak to fire, it, it says. Um, spoilers in case uh, you're playing uh, uh, Final Fantasy and uh, this is spoiling stuff for you. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, let's move on. Looks like we're on chapter three over here. Uh, this is in Seventh Heaven. Um, yeah. Uh, different things that you can do within Seventh Heaven here. Uh, doesn't look like they're telling us a, about a boss yet. So looks like Seventh Heaven is mainly going to be like in town type stuff, uh, playing darts, doing other different things. 
Uh, here we're moving into chapter four. Uh, middle of the night getaway, I think is what it says. Like midnight getaway or something. Um, uh, here's the boss character, Roche. Um, they actually do have his HP listed here. And then he's going to be weak to fire. Um, yeah, there's. A, I've seen this uh, done in a lot of different screens. Is the getaway using the motorcycle? Um, it actually gives you like the breakdown of like what everything does. X button, X and O button are going to um, hit hit left and right. Um, the triangle button. Uh, is something else uh, the accelerator is the R2 button brake is L2 and then guard is R1 so uh, let's see we got chapter 5 here outline of its boss this is a lot of HP there weak to uh, thunder that is an ugly looking boss what is that I have no idea um, Next one over here is the um, the Sun Slums, something like that. Uh, chapter six um, is given some information here on some of the uh, what do you call them? Uh, the bursts, maybe, or something like that. I forget what they're called in in the English. Um, but yeah, we got Ifrit over here and Chocobo and Moogle. Uh, chapter 7 is outlined on the next page. Yeah. Uh, you've got the boss here. More powerful boss. Weak to lightning. And that's it. So that's, that's good on that. Um... Uh, the next thing we have is um, how labs the makers of Kirby it's their 40th anniversary uh, this week I guess um, um, so it looks like they've had some kind of like a party for themselves um, uh, looks like they've made a website as well to document that uh, they have an interview here with the president of how labs uh, detailing the past and the future for Hal. Um, uh, they've got a list here of how the last 40 years has gone. Um, talking about uh, cafes that they've opened, Kirby cafes, one in Tokyo and one in Hakata. Um, this more details uh, the actual Kirby series. Um, uh, they're talking about um, Box Boy here. That's like probably their newest property that they've come out with. Um, uh, I forget what this game is called in English, but it's like a U. Uh, Ataraku UFO. So, working UFO, job UFO, something like that. I don't know. Uh, Yeah, uh, Smash Brothers, was that? Yeah, the original Smash was developed by Hal. Forgot about that. Um, 3D Picross. Oh, mini. This looks like a new mini device that they that they came out with. Asco Mini. 2017-2018, or 2019. Um, must be some kind of like small computer that was uh, a little bit popular in Japan. I don't know why they would put put out these things. Um, yeah, unless they were somewhat popular. Um,
So it's saying here that uh, they don't only make games, they also do other things. Um, uh, what do we got here? Kirby Land. Uh, Kirby Cafe. Yeah. Uh, there's a rehabilitation robot that they've made. Um, so yeah, they I, I I think that they want you to know that they're not just a, a game maker. Uh, here's uh, some uh, congratulatory messages from uh, other developers, large developers. Um, uh, Shigeru Miyamoto, um, the two main guys behind uh, Mother here have. Uh, said something um uh sakurai from smash brothers has said something uh, game freak oh the guy that created pokemon uh uh masuda uh junichi uh so yeah and then a message from famitsu as well looks like uh one of the head guys at famitsu so yeah, HAL Laboratories, they are a venerated uh, pub or developer of games. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's good to see that they're still going. Um, so let's move on uh, to the main feature of the week. Uh, we have uh, Bravely Default 2 here. Same, same picture as on the cover. Um, and then over here detailing the th uh, three different games that they're going to talk about. Um, yeah, Bravely Default 2. I played a lot of Bravely Default 1 on um, the 3DS. Um, I love the art style of Bravely Default. Looks really nice here. Um, uh, what does it say? So it just says that it's coming out in 2020. They don't have a definitive uh, uh, release date for it yet. So that's uh, interesting. <laughs> All right, move that cord around. Um, yeah, so just talking about uh, Bravely Default, what kind of game it's going to be. Um, you can see here these uh, characters, what they look like in the uh, in the designs, and then actual in game. I like the chibi style that they're going for. Um, uh, Seth and Gloria, like over here. Uh, so. Yeah, I think if you played the original Bravely Default, you're probably going to like this one. Um, standard uh, uh, RPG. Um, okay, so like I guess four 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 characters. Um, Oh, I want to check my phone, but I'm using my phone to record. <laughs> um, yeah, so showing uh, the play, uh, the battle screen right here. Um, yeah, standard uh, four-person RPG. Uh, Bravely default system is um, you can either be brave and get an extra action. You can default and save your action for another time. Um, that's their main mechanic, brave and default. Um, over here, uh, we have uh, just more information on the game. Yeah, detailing what each character is like. Um, uh, looks like there's going to be a um, a demo of the game uh, that was one of the cool things about the original game is that when it came out on 3ds uh, it had this huge demo that you could seriously play for 20 30 40 hours and then your save would then go over to the uh, to the main game um, yeah that 
I, I always enjoyed that. And um, it looks like they're doing much the same thing here. I, I don't know if it's going to be um, the same length, but it looks like at least, uh, yeah, they're going to tell an original story in the demo version. Uh, you're going to be able to transfer your save. Yeah. So, and you can fill out a survey if you want. Uh, interview here with a couple of the people on the team. Uh, long interview. Uh, Various Day Life. Uh, this is a game coming to Apple Arcade. Um, looks to be done in... At least the same art style as um, uh, Bravely Default. Uh, I don't know if this is the same world. Um, I'm not seeing anything written here about that, but um, you can definitely tell by the art style. Uh, it's an RPG. Uh, looks like there's going to be some tapping. Um, uh, so the battle the the the, the battles are going to play out in three chas chains chain and chance oh that's some kind of funny little thing that they've put together to uh uh it says if you do three chas then you'll get the best damage put together so they're showing you chains chains Change, chain, chance, and then over here you can see that he got the person got forty three, so it, it looks like maybe that's the best um, best damage that they would have output. So, um, yeah, I wish I could play this. I don't have uh, Apple an iOS device, so um, yeah, I'm kind of screwed on this. And then the next one is an Octopath Traveler that's coming out for both iOS and Android. Um, free game. Uh, they're going to have uh, pay for different items. But uh, definitely Octopath Traveler uh, graphics in here. Uh, yeah, it looks pretty good. Um, I know that a lot of uh, Americans uh, don't really like mobile games. They don't get into them. But the thing is, is that in Japan, mobile games are, games are, are king because people um, are constantly moving around and they're using a lot of public transportation. So it gives them a lot of time to actually play games on their phone. So, um, yeah, if, if you're not, if a mobile Octopath Traveler or a mobile Various Day Life doesn't appeal to you understand that those do very much appeal to a Japanese audience and Square Enix being a Japanese publisher is um, gonna focus largely on the games that um, that they that Japanese people want um, I'm sure that they're gonna localize these for the US because they don't want to lose out on that money but um, yeah um, I think uh, um, if you don't like that kind of game, don't play it. It's nothing that you really need to bitch about. <laughs> um, so detailing some of the different areas in here. Looks like we have uh, woodlands and we see different characters. Um, I'm sure this is probably going to be some kind of a gotcha game uh, where you're going to try and collect as many characters as possible. Uh, Frostlands over here. Um, uh, lots of characters uh, flatlands over here lots of characters uh, coastlands here and more characters riverlands here and more characters so and sunlands here and more characters so oh my god and another one highlands here more characters are we done Yes, we're done. Thank God. Okay, um, so let's move on to the next area. Uh, I've been trying to keep these uh, episodes at a uh, half hour to an hour, and it looks like we've just gone over the half hour mark. So 
Uh, yeah, we're doing pretty good. We're getting through here in a good clip. Um, yeah, I like to usually check out the indie game that they're showcasing uh, in Famitsu. Uh, it's a pro, uh, PC game called Ostriv. The maker is Yevhen8. Um, seems very Eastern European or North Asian. <laughs> Um, but it looks like a city building game of some kind, uh, mainly countryside. Um, yeah, uh, it's a PC game, came out uh, the 19th of last month, looks like it's about 25 bucks. Uh, might have to check this out see what this is all about um, yeah uh, you don't generally see rural um... okay so it does say 18th century uh, Ukraine is the setting so it is uh, Eastern European um, but yeah you don't you don't generally see uh, um what what is what is this kind of game called like a civ game or that kind of thing uh with uh, a rural setting um i mean yeah most of them take place as uh, on untouched land but this seems like much more focused on a very uh, particular time 18th century um they have a nice uh, right up here on the Tales of Mana 3, um, or Seiken Densetsu 3, Tales of Mana. Um, got some pretty sweet looking screens in here. Um, I like the character designs. Uh, um yeah uh interview here with some of the developers um fairy tale popular anime um there's a game coming out in june that is a fairy tale game it's an rpg uh, some information here about Yokai Watch, the new Yokai Watch game. Not too interested in that. Uh, there's a new version update for Dragon Quest X, uh, the online MMORPG that is only available in Japan uh, on PC, PlayStation 4, Wii U, and Switch. It's on 3DS as well, but maybe they don't update update that one anymore. I think I heard that somewhere um tonight yeah tonight on uh nico nico periscope or youtube famitsu is doing their uh award ceremony for um game of the year uh if i remember i'm gonna try to watch that um oh so i guess that's probably about it uh this is what we end every week with um I don't think there's anything more to really talk about. Oh, here's uh, the reviews. Uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake uh, got itself a platinum review here. Uh, 9, 10, 10, 10. Uh, pretty good. Um, Celeste got a pretty good review as well. That just came out in Japan. 8, 9, 7, 7. Um, yeah. Um, this is detailing uh, uh, Xbox Game Pass is finally coming out in Japan. It's interesting. Surprised that that hasn't come out yet. Um, top news of the week was uh, the new PlayStation Five controller, so they got a little bit about it. Usually, in the back of the magazine here, they're talking about um, some of the hardware news. Uh, they always have this marketing report on. What's doing good? Uh, looks like Nintendo Switch Lite has dove quite a bit. 
Nintendo Switch has gone down, but it's it's kind of going back up just a tiny bit. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, people are worried about their monetary situation. So, um, all right, here we are, snacks. My favorite part of the week. I don't know about you, but this is definitely my favorite part of the week. Um, uh, over here, uh, this is all stuff you can get at convenience stores around Japan. Uh, some of these uh, snacks at the bottom are available at convenience stores or supermarkets, that kind of thing. But this stuff on top usually tends to be only at uh, convenience stores. Um, this one up top is uh, Baumkuhen. Um, it's, I, I don't know if these are popular in Europe. I think it's uh, a German uh dessert but um yeah uh japan loves its baumkuhens uh it's flaky little breaded pieces that are kind of like divided apart i've actually watched them i've watched in kyoto across from kyoto station there's a department store that makes baumkuhens and they have a machine that like rolls into the batter and then bakes and then rolls into the batter and bakes and by doing that, each layer of the baumkuhen um, is cooked at a different time, and uh, yeah, so that's kind of how the how the thing is made. Um, and so they're doing uh, kind of a stick version here at one of the at Lawson. Um, so a little something there. Uh, Family Mart has a uh, beef salad. Um, yeah, old beef. Um, down here we have uh, uh, a soy sauce soba at Lawson, and then Family Mart has uh, garlic butter pork and some karage, stamina karage. Over here at Mini Stop, uh, Mini Stop is one of my favorite uh, um, convenience stores. Um, you can get fresh uh, soft cream behind the counter just when you go up and pay. And what they have here is Halo Halo. Halo Halo is a Filipino dessert, and uh, this is the Japanese interpretation on that. So up here we have Halo Halo Ramune. Ramune is a uh, kind of um, soda that's popular in japan uh you'll know it because it comes in a glass bottle usually with like a a um what do you call it a, like a ball bearing inside so uh yeah so this is uh hollow hollow ramune so the the drink is ramune flavor there's going to be some um either fruit or fruit looking stuff and then ice cream on top and bottom um this is a strawberry hollow hollow, so it's gonna be strawberries and then ice cream. And then this is a grape hollow hollow, so grape and ice cream. Uh, down here, um, ooh, this looks good. Um, this is yakisoba. Um, uh, this one is coming with uh, a rayu mayonnaise. Rayu is a, um, it's a kind of oil that came from China originally. And uh, it's actually where ramen come, gets its name from is because it's using the ra from rayu and then also men, which is like noodles. So um, it's, I don't know if it's, it, I, I think rayu is supposed to be a little spicy. Um, I'm sure the Japanese version is not spicy, so. Um, down here we have um, uh, chuka soba. Chuka soba, I think, I, as far as I've ever been able to tell, is just another way to say ramen. Uh, Chinese soba. Um, chuka soba. So there's a ramen down here, a new new one there. And then um, noritama. This is a, a kind of furika, furikake. Rikake is this sprinkly stuff that you put on your rice to just zazz up your rice a little bit. Helps uh, kids a lot of time eat rice. Um, but, I mean, adults eat it too. 
it's a way to just add a little bit of extra um, um, what do you call it Let me take a drink it's a, a way to add extra zazz to your rice that you're eating every single day um, as well as uh, some more um, nutrients I guess is the word I'm looking for so it adds a little bit of extra nutrients to your rice a lot of times um, it'll be fish um, or different kinds of uh, herbs spices that kind of stuff <coughs> um, over here um, magic Mike popcorn um, this is a kind of popcorn that is popular in Japan they sell it in the same bags that potato chips come in I've always found it to be pretty um, rubbery. Uh, as a Midwestern American, I've eaten a lot of popcorn. I love popcorn. My local grocery store sells big plastic things of freshly made popcorn. And even if you buy them and they are five or six hours old, it's still good popcorn. But this is mass produced at a factory somewhere and tastes like rubber. Um, the thing that does interest me though is this popcorn is actually tastes like fried rice so that seems interesting and who knows maybe i'll try it uh down here we have um caramel corn and peanuts caramel corn is a kind of um snack that's popular over here uh think of it as like a puffed cheeto that actually has like a sweet caramel flavor on it i don't know why but in Japan, corn and sweetness go together. Um, that's definitely not true of America, but yeah. Um, and then the last one we have here is um, these are kind of like little sembes. Um, and it looks like it's going to be edamame flavored, uh, but it says spicy edamame, uh, pirikara. So it's going to have like a little spice to it. Ah, uh, uh, it's got karashi, so like um, a little bit of cayenne pepper maybe sprinkled on it. I, I think it's probably going to be the very littlest amount. So, there you go. That is this week's version episode of Omitsu Check It Out. Um, top story was three new Square Enix games, uh, two of them for mobile and uh one of them being bravely default 2 which doesn't have a release date so um yeah if you're interested in new rpgs coming from square enix uh you should be happy i think uh if uh final fantasy 7 remake is any indication um i think we can trust we we, we should be able to trust uh Square Enix again. Uh, hopefully, um, they've got their head out of their asses and they can bring us some good RPGs again. I think we'd all like to see that. Um, I am not a fantasy or a Kingdom Hearts player. I don't know what a Kingdom Hearts fan would have thought about Kingdom Hearts 3, um, but as someone who's not a Kingdom Hearts player, and just enjoys video games i do think that kingdom hearts 3 was not a game that was made for me it, it square square does a lot of sequels and with final fantasy dragon quest these types of games they can make a sequel that anybody can play um now we all know that final fantasy games have nothing to do with each other but a remake in some ways is a sequel as well um and yeah kingdom hearts definitely is not a game for a new player to pick up and get into i'm sure that they added stuff for that kind of person but I think if a person went and bought Kingdom Hearts 3 and they've never played any other Kingdom Hearts thing, even though there's a little primer for them to get 
amped for the series and try to figure out where things are at, I still think they're going to be fucking lost. Um, but, um, yeah. Uh, other than that, uh, Bravely Default 2, I don't think is really going to pick up on too much story from the first game. I think it's just going to be an interesting game right off the bat for anybody that wants to play it. And I think that's where they should go. Final Fantasy VII is, from all accounts online, a great game that anybody and their mother would want to play. Um, and I applaud them for that. I'm glad that they hit one out of the park. Um, so, yeah, this has been... Uh, your episode of Famitsu Check It Out for April 17th, 2020. Uh, my name is Paul Smith. Uh, please check out my website, owrgames.com. Um, I just got HTTPS on there. Yay! I'm in the, I'm in the 20th century. Um, yeah, my website isn't anything special. I wish I was more of a web designer. If anybody out there wants to help me, make it awesome let me know drop me a line somewhere um uh yeah follow follow me on mixer if you're watching this right now this is broadcast to mixer um i should actually figure out a way to broadcast it to everything um i think that would be much better for me in the in the long run um what else um oh yeah uh follow me on twitter you can follow my personal Twitter, which is S O P A C H U C O 1 3, S O Pachuco 13. Um, you can follow me there, and I post things and retweet things. And yeah, that's where I post most of my stuff. Um, but then you can also follow OWR Games on Twitter as well to get updates on newest videos and where when I put up the uh, archives on YouTube and stuff like that. Follow my YouTube channel, OWR Games. Um, uh, Facebook, also o OWR Games. So follow me everywhere. Like everything I have. Watch everything I have. Enjoy everything I have. Um, yeah, so that's going to do it for this week. I'm going to try to put the archive up so it's up tonight, Japan time, which would be Saturday morning, America time. So, all right, I'm going to stop the recording now.